Hi, Jeremy Cordo in the Court of Public Opinion. I'm just on air here to let you know that we'll be live streaming the Court of Public Opinion every Friday between 9 o'clock and 12 on jeremycordo.com. Please join us. We'd love to have you. Hey Adelaide, it's your boy Con from Brian Trophy Center. You ready, mate? Party people! And now it's time, live from the Oscar Studios, it's best team men. On the show! <laughs> Thanks to Con and Lena at the Brighton Trophy Centre. Jared's lost it. Yeah. Oh, Shifty Lizard. And my man, Steve the Pirate, who I went and saw yesterday, and he sorted me out. Yeah. And also did some physio on me. Yeah. Uh, did, he, gonna... um, did he brush your teeth? No, he didn't brush my teeth. He gave me some squatting actions to do whilst I brush my teeth. Yeah, but I don't he... know if that's part of what he usually does. He does uh, have the best beard in the game, though, I will say that. Yeah. Well, so. He has a very good beard, doesn't he? He has he, a... um, He's he's very calm and he's like he has a beautiful presence about him yeah. and then he just really goes hard with his hands and you're like hold on what about all this calm talk we had before yeah, I get off to, me I thought this is to do with my back not that <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we're, well two of us are here in the studio Andy myself yes and then obviously you food's very own Jared Walsh is at home <laughs> spawn yeah, I'm gonna come and talk about this I'm just getting headphones so just talk amongst yourself no worries phones you know it's really hilarious I just realised <laughs> that uh, old mate. Um, you foods there is uh, on the floor and he's laying down <laughs> recording this, so he might sound a bit unusual than uh, yeah. uh, what he normally sounds He'll like. Sound a bit compressed, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, see, I am here because um, I was supposed to come in, but then what about this? So, my daughter's childcare sent us a message yesterday throughout the afternoon, and they're like, "Hey guys, um, you may need to come and pick up your child because we have a plumbing issue at childcare, oh. and the power's gone out." So, like, oh, okay, fair enough, we'll do that. Then a message last night. No, nah, all good. Playing's back to normal. You can come in tomorrow. Then about eight o'clock last night. Yeah, no, no, we didn't. Um, we, we underestimated how bad this plumbing issue is. So obviously, all the kids at childcare have done massive dumps. I don't. I just. I just reckon you went along and um, took care of it, and because uh, that sounds like something you <laughs> so that's do. What I, I, I sound a bit echoey. Um, what's what's going on with this this U Foods banter? Like I saw this on social media yesterday, and whoever does our Instagram obviously is bored because oh, there a is rich. a a tag for me that. I I put up a post. I'm trying to make a living. I was made redundant, so I didn't want to bring it up again, but you guys obviously had. And U Foods is a fantastic, ready to go food product. <laughs> it's healthy, it is convenient, and the taste is incredible. Hey, and I highly recommend. What, what happened to you Thomas Farms in- that you were all into uh, a few years back? That is also a very nice establishment. <laughs> but we, while while you are asking about you foods, if you go online and uh, use the code summer dash Jared for twenty percent off orders over sixty nine dollars, T's and C's apply. See the website. Thanks okay. for bringing it up. Okay, so when you made All this right, deal with <laughs> when you made this deal with you foods, um, yeah. did you have to meet them like in person? Did you drive there in your Eblen Subaru? Like, how did it work? No, no, they just said, hey, Jared, you've got a really good presence about you and uh, we know that you live a pretty busy lifestyle. You've got a young family and we were going to speak to the other members of Best Team Men, but we had a look at Matty's socials and he's doing a schnitzel tour of South Australia and we had a look at Andy's socials and he has drank all the shifty lizard beer. So you probably are the best candidate to be a brand ambassador for us. I don't know what you should talk about, guys, but I have a fantastic time. Well, I reckon... I reckon I've had you foods before. I reckon they do a schnitzel. I'll review it. Oh yeah. Well, you won't, mate. No, you're out. Sorry, they've they've picked me, and I think you guys need to just deal with it. Well, Andy and I are going to work on getting our own sponsorships over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I think little no, good luck can with throw that. some cash. You know that would entail writing back to emails. So there's your first issue. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's your job. So <laughs> hey, we yeah. have a big round, boys. I know it's a little bit different because we're we're not in the Ozcast studio, but um, there's a, a lot to happen. So we will be playing our Back to the Future game. I have that ready to go, Maddie. Nine out of ten last round, incredible. It. it caused a stir on social 
social media. Um, we will open up the checks in the mailbag. Um, Maddie, we need your take on what's happening in South Australia with the recent yeah. COVID announcements because you've been very passionate on social media. Yep. How have both of your weeks been to start off with? I like to ask that question. Uh, mine has been very busy. The, the world of podcasting has seemed to have uh, awoken within Australia and uh, things are pretty crazy from a content point of view to uh, advertising and stuff like that. So things are pretty cool. Little Box Co's office hits again. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, I was looking at other opportunities for Yaz to uh, get stuck into um, uh, while we waited for Little Box Co. to take off, but uh, that seems yeah. to have come a little early. So if you do want a, a good gourmet food box, there's a huge range up there right now. Um, hashtag Spawn. Um, I'll do a sponsorship uh, partnership on Instagram for it as well. And um, get on there and check it out. It's quite cheap um, and it's very good. And you never know, I could come to your door and also give you a box. Well, yep. <laughs> well, you did. You actually <laughs> arrived at my house over the weekend, and I wasn't there. But yeah. you were you were doing all the deliveries, and that's something I love because I think that if if the the owner of the business is the one doing the deliveries, they can yeah. actually speak to the consumer and tell you more about the product, the work that goes into it, instead of just a staff member that goes, yeah, I know nothing. I'm just getting paid casual wages here. Well, even not a staff member, like we've had opportunities to have other people deliver it, uh, but it just it's, isn't the same. It's not the same um, engaging mm-hmm. relationship with the with the client or the purchaser of the box. Um, and yeah, we, we like to meet the people that buy them. Um, and there's a lot of people that are like rebuying them and re- reordering them as well. So we, we've got lots yeah. of little relationships starting up everywhere with some cool people. So Good. What about you, Maddie? How's your week been, brother? I've had one of those weird weeks like, I'm shooting off to Perth tonight and yeah. you know where you just, you've got something, you're going away and you're like, I've just got to get through the next couple of days and, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. I'm out of here and yeah. you just half ass yeah. everything. As soon as you sit your seat on that plane, yeah. that is the best feeling in the world. Unreal, isn't it's it? It's just like, uh, yeah. like back in the day, there would be no, um, when there was no internet on, on yeah. the planes, it was just like, you know, you had your phone until you took off yeah. and it was just the greatest feeling to know any issues you had, no matter what they were, they were out the door they until wait. you got back. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, and that's what I used to love about overseas trips as well. Like say you're going to the US or something like that, you've got 15, 16 hours of you just don't have to talk to anyone. Yeah. No one can contact you and it's just bliss. Also seeing your other family, isn't that right, Jared? Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> and I think it's really yeah. important to acknowledge them. <laughs> uh, it has been a, it's been a pretty trend. good week. Um, in, in South Australia, we're recording on a Wednesday morning. And uh, less than an hour ago, Stephen Marshall, the Premier, has come out and said, you know what, people can dance in South Australia now. And I instantly thought of Matt Burgess because if you follow Matt on social media, if you have a look at his Facebook, every weekend it's pretty much a g'day, Stephen. Um, here is an example of people dancing. Is there a chance we can do it in South Australia? The one over the weekend was brilliant. The, the video of people in, in Melbourne getting around each other. And Matt, Matt's social media is a journey whether it's football on Twitter on a Saturday night or a Sunday night, following his EPL coverage, Facebook for uh, um, his uh, commentary on schnitzels and also um, the state of South Australia, I think it's really important. So I wanted you to talk through what this means apart from the obvious of people dancing. Yeah, well, um, obviously it's been a, been a long time since we've been able to dance, over a year now. So... I think mm, end of Feb, early March was the last time. So, and the other states, like I said, and you, you just mentioned the video that I put up, Melbourne just came out of a, a five day snap lockdown where it was, you know, hard closures and stuff like that. So, and then wait, they went straight back into dancing and, and basically unlimited numbers. And for us who haven't had a, a community case here for a fair while now, yep. it just seemed a bit ridiculous. So, th- the state government, their whole angle on it was. Uh, they were blaming poor ventilation in venues as to why you couldn't dance. But people were in there. People were standing. Um, so, yeah, none of it really made sense. So, yeah, today they announced that the venues under 200, uh, free-for-all, dancing, go nuts. So, for me, a venue under 200 is going to be quite small, poor ventilation. Uh, Give ve- us an example of a venue under 200 uh, so we can paint the picture. Cry Baby in the city, I think, holds about 150. Okay. Um, yeah. So, say they have 150 in there, all 150 can dance. Awesome. Uh-huh. That's great. Venues 200 capacity to 1,000, so where probably Red Square fits, uh, Dog and Dark, Black Ball, those sort of places, um, they can have an allocated area of only 50 people dancing. So it's like the people wow. at the silent disco. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So, look, it's awesome that dancing's finally starting to make its way back. That 
setup doesn't make a lot of sense to me where you can have a small venue have up to 200 people dancing, no worries, and the bigger venues can only have 50. Again, doesn't make a whole heap of sense, but I'm just grateful that we're starting to go in the right direction. Here's a question. This might be a question for um, Steve the Pirate at Minor Movement, but um, because we haven't danced for a year and Injuries. people going out and drinking hard and, and dancing hard, is there going to be a lot of ankles getting snapped and calf muscles <laughs> and um, <laughs> shotguns going off? But who, oh, there's a shooting here. No, nah, it's just my Achilles. <laughs> like, um, Can you imagine uh, someone going to Minor Movement and sitting down with <laughs> Steve the Pirate and after they've brushed each other's teeth then he is going to say so how can I help you and they're like look this might be a unique question but I'm about to go out and I haven't danced for a little while do you have any stretches I need to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you put two fingers in and then, um, oh. and then you just twist it a little bit. All good. Way All you good go. to go. <laughs> I, 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 I'm interested to see how venues are going to police the 50 people that are dancing. Oh, you yeah. know they're going to go harder. That well, how are they going to identify? They're just going to have cops at every single. Oh yeah, the government will. But yeah. how are venues going to identify? Like, you're going to wear a, like a. No, you, you, yeah, you, they'll probably be like they'll probably roll up with uh, yeah, like those yeah. Uh, uh, bright type. orange uh, triangle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Or, or the the rope thingy. Yeah, and then they'll be like, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then try to work out the grid. I imagine it's going to be similar to like you know when you get some shaved ham at the deli section and you get a ticket. Yeah. And then your number yeah. pops yeah. up when you go there. Yeah. Well, don't most clubs- or people are going to sneak in like you uh, You do the 12 items or less, but sometimes you just sneak in 14. You put, no, I've got two avocados in the one bag. This is one bag you're scanning, mate. And yeah. they just go, yeah, no worries. And, and then good. you get the odd person. But I, I roll count up everybody's items in front of me just so I can give them a death stare. Do you think um, that, say, Red Square, for example, I haven't been there in years, but yeah. um, I'm assuming that they still have like back rooms and side rooms yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Um, that they will make that the dance room only, so then that's only where 50 people can go? No, because both rooms are able to hold about, or well, at the moment due to current capacity restrictions, each room can hold about 120, Yeah, right, because when so, I was there mm. in the back room doing some crazy game show thing, I had about 2,000. Was that people. hush? Because I did that in the back no, room No, no, well, I, I, was another, I was another one hit wonder in that back room. Um, and last Not about DJing four related. Weeks. No, no, it was some entertainment thing, you know, like... Uh, Velvet Underground? No, no, um, just... Andy upper ground and um, <laughs> <laughs> and like I was like and it was like full game show style so like um, I can't remember who was DJing but um, I was Love Shack what huh? you saying random words now <laughs> no it wasn't Love Shack something that uh, no, a that guy the, we used that, to work with put on the showgrounds oh no no it's, it's also probably a brothel I would assume um, <laughs> which ties back to other, other couple of episodes um <laughs> No, um, <laughs> no, I had to get up there and be like, all right, guys, like literally with that yeah. voice, it's time to play some games. Who wants to swap themselves in a potato sack? Like in uh, all, all that sort of shit. I um, remember those ones. Yeah. I remember those yeah. ones at like bubble gum on a Thursday night where yeah, you yeah, get like yeah. a man and a, a woman up there and they'd have to swap clothes you behind a sheet. You would be in court a lot now if you still did all that Absolutely. stuff back then. You'd be a really good game show host, Andy, I reckon. Yeah, You'd be agree. very good. And there is, I mean, you could take over from Andrew Ikea. We're not going to go into details what's going on there, but I reckon you'd be really good at hosting Deal or No Deal or yeah, stuff we'll, like that. We'll tag team. What about the game show? And also the game show. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. No, don't go there. Um, so I had a really strange start to the week earlier on. Oh, what and, happened, mate? Uh, I had to go up to the Barossa um, oh, to record God. the Maker and the Drinker, which was um, Sensational an amazing Sensational podcast on the Oscast Network. It, it is on the Oscast Network. And... Oh man, like it was, this is the thing I love about podcasting is to get the podcast kit and go up and um, the episode will come out over the next few days, but it's first day of vintage up in the Barossa Valley. So this is the most full on time for winemakers. And we were sitting in a shed with a a winemaker who's just, um, this is the first time that he's been in this shed with, with all the barrels and everything. And he's just picked the grapes and it's like far out. This is, this is pretty awesome. So to do it up there and there was, we went to two wineries. The, the second one, which will come out in a few weeks, we were sitting in like this room, which smelt like oak and wine. And you know how much I love red wine. It was just heaven for me. The smell was amazing. So to paint the picture, it's a different vibe when you're in there when, rather than when you're in a studio. I think like I love being in the Oscar studio, but when you're doing a wine podcast, have a glass of wine and sit in a room where the barrels are. It's a different, different vibe. So it's yeah. not like yeah. my school um, excursion to the Coke factory where mm. it just stank like Coke syrup and then you never touch Coke after that um, because of the smell. Like, uh, it's nah, a different story. Nah, this, was, this was 
just the most beautiful smell that right up there with some of the best smells I've ever smelled. And I've got a big nose. So um, it was, it was incredible. I've also smelled some pretty off smells. So um, it was, it was a bit different. Um, So anyway, we needed the the podcast kit and that's what you had, Andy. So you dropped it off to to my house on Sunday and then you talked me through it on Sunday night. Now, Matt, this was a, such a weird experience because I was getting Andy to help me out with the program to record the uh, podcast into the audio. The program is called Audacity yep. um, and it's a, a pretty good program. But with any kind of hardware, you need to A, install the drivers. Now, with Max, it basically does it straight away when you put a USB into it. But I needed Andy to talk me through it because I didn't want to get to the brosser and stuff it up. That would have been a waste of time and a waste of everybody's time. So Andy and I were on FaceTime. And I was trying to show him my screen and he said, oh, why don't we do Facebook chat on, um, on the computer or FaceTime on the computer? So then he could access my screen and actually move the mouse around. And I said, I don't have FaceTime on my computer. He said, okay, no worries. I'll be back in a sec. So Andy's gone, I'll be back in a sec. And I'm sitting there having a look at this, just pretty much just this screen, just pretending I know I'm what I'm doing. Then a couple of seconds later, I hear through my computer yeah, g'day, mate. I'm in your computer. <laughs> <laughs> and I've gone, wait a sec, what is happening? And Andy's voice is coming out of the speakers of my computer. He's like, yeah, I'm here, mate. I'm just, I'm just on your computer. And the mouse starts moving. The weird thing was there wasn't anything that popped up that said, can you give Andy Martin access? It just happened. Like Don't he's hacked access. into my computer and he's moving around. He's Googling things, inappropriate oh. things, mind you. Yeah, it was And I'm just watching it happen. And I'm going, how, how does that? I didn't know that was a thing. I tell you what, all I wanted to do was make sure that whenever you get onto Facebook and any wish advertisements came up, that you had some dirty stuff in there. So that's why I was just Googling heaps of weird, dirty stuff. Um yeah, no, that's what I do, man. I just jump straight on that computer and just sort it right out. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, so has that ever happened to you, Maddie? Because that was the most bizarre experience, just to hear me sitting there, then Andy go, yeah, can I, mate? No. And I'm looking like, wait, can you see me? Can you see what I'm wearing? Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, haven't had any, I haven't had anyone do it without my authority, No. I've had it happen before where I've needed people to come in onto my computer and, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, show me things. But, and, yeah. and the mouse has been moving around without my um, doing. So, yeah. yeah, but I've let them do it. So, no, no one has done it apart from the, the, the packy, you know, packy the, from the packy. But the weirdest thing for me with that was the fact that um, this is really only for audio engineers or, you know, um, anyone in the audio industry. Um, okay. When I was talking, it wasn't picking up in Audacity. It was just, I was literally oh, coming right. out of the speakers of the computer. It had nothing to do with what was going on with the microphone. Yeah. It was crazy. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to so tell you weird. how I did it. Um, but basically, I can do it anytime, so be careful. <laughs> you know, every time I turn on the computer now, I'm like, I just need to make sure that I'm wearing something because Andy could be there at any time. So, yeah, it was definitely a uh, unique experience. Boys, should we get into one of our first little segments? We've got a nice little um, collection of segments here now on um, Best Team Men. You can get involved on social media at Best Team Men on Twitter. That's the same as um, Facebook and Instagram, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, let's <laughs> Sam. Sexy. Sexy. Sam. So this oh, is what we like yeah. to do is share Sam uh, Tugwell from the Press Box app. He is a man who is unintentionally sexy every time he talks on their podcast. And look, um, this one is a, a bit of a, a throwback for Sexy Sam, but I think it fits in really well, uh, and so does the audio. So, look, <laughs> uh, without further ado, we would like <laughs> to throw ado. over to Sexy Sam. It's here, it's up, and it's erect, and it's uh, it's all happening. Sexy, sexy Sam. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> And the, that, that audio was actually taken from Sexy Sam's bedroom. He hacked his computer and heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wasn't even on the podcast. No. Absolutely. <laughs> so every time we listen to Press Box, we'll listen out to um, Sam Tugwell, who, again, is doing a great job um, on 5AA. I feel like he could be a good candidate for your uh, meditation podcast. He has a great voice for that sort of stuff. Yeah, he does. He might he might be a bit too up, though, if you know what I mean. A bit too erect. Yeah, a bit too erect. Yeah. Um, uh, like if he pulled it back a bit. 
<laughs> oh man! Oh, he, 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 none of this is intentional. Oh, it just accidentally goes it. this way. Oh my uh, god! So I'm I'm struggling at home at the moment with dad life. It's um our, our kid is sleeping, which is great. She's almost six weeks old. But the other night we had this uh, incident. So. Uh, her she sleeping pattern, finger. pretty much, my missus puts her to bed at seven o'clock. She'll sleep for no? two to three hours. Say again? I said, no, you said you had that incident and I was like, oh, she lost a finger. And I was like, no, that wasn't her. That was your brother. No, that was, that, that was, that was certainly <laughs> another one. Um, and I, I try to get up at three in the morning to try and do um, uh, feed and change nappy and resettle uh, the baby. I feel really defeated though, because on the app that we've got with this cot, it shows when the baby is awake. So the times the baby is awake when my wife is settling her is about 10 to 15 minutes. The time that she's awake when I'm settling her is about one to two hours. Whoa. So I'm really struggling at that side of things. Maybe that's because um, you've been you're so used to being on radio and entertaining for a whole shift, <laughs> and then and it's not no, telling her jokes. That's so true, man. Because you shouldn't look the baby in the eye. You shouldn't really engage eye contact and stuff, so they can just go back to sleep. But I'm looking at it, going, "Oh, you're so cute. Can you smile for me?" And it's like three o'clock in the morning. But again, my body clock is used to getting up really early, whether it's for the gym or radio and stuff. So I had this moment. Um, a couple of nights ago where I'm like, I am going to do everything perfect and just make this moment happy. And I'm going to be proud of myself. My wife's going to be proud of me. So got to three in the morning. I've got the kid out of the uh, cot. I've changed to nappy. I'm like, everything's good so far. Everything's great so far. She's settled. She's had a feed. I've burped her. Perfect. Taken the nappy off, gone for a change. I'm like, this is awesome. This is great. I'm going to win. I'm going to be victorious. I'll be able to go in the gym in the morning. What is that warm sensation, which is on my belly going down my leg at the moment? I'm not sure. It might be a little bit weird, but there's something warm happening. No, it hasn't stopped. It's really warm. And I've turned the light on and the kid has shat all over me. Yeah, it was really. (laughs) (laughs) It was uh, a, a pretty defeating thing. However, the silver lining was after she shat all over me and I had to wash all the shit out of my belly button, she went to sleep. Oh, so I good. took oh. it as a victory. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah, a absolutely. huge win. Yeah. Ding. <laughs> I was kind of thinking pre, like, pre all that stuff. With our, with our oldest daughter, she never did anything like that. Andy, do you notice that with um, your, your, your two daughters, like the, the oldest one and the youngest one, how different they are in their, their like, personality traits and what they do? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, Georgia, the oldest one, she was in our bed for two years. So um, uh, the whole waking up thing sort of didn't really happen. But with, uh, with Millie, she, we, we went, fuck that. Uh, she's going yep. into her own bed and uh, yeah, like I, I get up for her. So um, I, this morning I was up with her at three o'clock till four o'clock and had yep. had a f- similar issue. Like she, I think she's a little bit unwell because she had some immunizations last week and um, uh, she spit on me. So uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that was good. Awesome. Uh, very similar thing, but on, on the arm. So I was like yeah. uh, three o'clock walking in the dark, trying to calm her down and uh, yep. you hear it. And then, <laughs> then you're like, there's this warm flowing substance on my, on my left arm and it's not yep. what it usually is. And um, so then I turn the light on and it's, uh, it's vomit. <laughs> <laughs> and this, the, stage, the stage that Millie's at, it's not just vomiting back the milk now. Like there'd be all lots of stuff in Solids. there. Yeah, yeah. She's, uh, she's um, an absolute machine when it comes to food. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's like a, a rainbow of uh, fruit flavours. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This is, this is the stuff you've got to look forward to, Maddie. This yeah. is um, all exciting stuff. This is definitely yeah. turning. This is the best form of contraception for you talking to us about our kids. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Or it might be the other way. You just like you finish the episode. And you're like, Jesus, you want to get this done? <laughs> <laughs> Kira, what are you up to right now? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're we're going to open the checks in the mailbag soon because there's been some a lot of questions actually. There yeah, have been a lot Insta of questions one. that um, need answers, yeah. which is good. Would you want to um, open it now? Yeah, or? let's open it now. All right. Okay, let's see. You've got mail. Yep. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Well, let's start with the Instagram questions. Uh, right. I know, Walsh, you've got a heap of the uh, Twitter ones. Oh, wait. Um, Heaps of Twitter Sorry, ones. who does Twitter? I'm not sure. All right. Um, is Boo's team men ever coming back? Oh, that's a very good yes. question. It's a great question. Yeah, yeah it, it is. We we gave a little bit of a teaser last week about Shifty Lizard. Um, there is an announcement that will be happening regarding Shifty Lizard. I think we'll probably be in a position next round to talk about what's going on with that. But Booze Team Men is still definitely a thing yep. and it will be back, no doubt about it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is the size of the screen in Jared's new Outback a compensation for anything else? <laughs> 
fair question. Yeah. <laughs> Who asked that? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Are the crew at Evelyn Subaru. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating screen in there. It's amazing. And yes, yes, okay. it is. Oh, awesome. Love your honesty. Uh, how many NBA jerseys does Jared own? Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. It's a good one. So I would have easily over 100 Easily over 100. You're yep. a very organised man. Do you have them like um, collated on an Excel spreadsheet somewhere? Uh, not really. And I'm, I'm really particular in the ones that I wear. Like I will rarely wear ones that aren't current. I, I also feel like I won't wear one. I won't wear a player that is not at the particular team anymore. Right. So I kind of like to wear the jerseys that not many people are wearing around. So if I see other people wearing it, I probably won't wear that jersey again. Okay. Yep, that's um, fair. But yeah, it's the closest I've come to being an athlete, just being obsessed with sports tops. And I really look like deep into the the sports top mantra of their sponsors, the layout, the way the cut is, all that stuff. It's a real, real passion. Nice. Cool. Okay, two more from the Instagram. Um, this, <laughs> I feel like this one's at Andy more than anyone. No, um, how do you? Have you ever waxed your ring hole? <laughs> <laughs> I love our listeners. <laughs> I, I haven't, no. Is it from Yaz? No, it's, no, 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 no I, I haven't touched my bum hole. Okay. With that. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, she, have you ever um, gone down that path? <laughs> nah, no. Nah, I've, I've left hair removal cream on uh, my private parts for too long once using oh. Beat and uh, it was a horrific experience and I still get like goosebumps of how bad it was. <laughs> Okay, last one. Matt, you? Uh, yeah, no, yeah, I said yeah, at the start you, I had You really jumped past that. Um, no, I said okay. I said it, I was the first one. To oh, okay. I hadn't. So, sorry. Okay. okay, no, I haven't. <laughs> um, just to your enemies. Um, <laughs> what, what? This is a two part question. Uh, two party. Yep. Two party party. Party party. What is your favourite podcast outside of Best Team Men, and where does Postbox app rank in your podcast listening? Postbox. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, post box. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll go first. Right. Um, I love uh, NBA podcasts, basketball podcasts. I really enjoy listening to. Um, I, I find that there's a lot of really good player driven podcasts now, which I enjoy because it's um, it's the rapport they have with their interview subject is really casual and comfortable, and it's not someone being interviewed by someone they may not trust as much. So their answers are a lot more casual. Yeah. Um, so I enjoy listening to that. There's two, there's two, there's the old man and the three, which JJ Reddick, who plays for the Pelicans hosts. Um, I still listen to a lot of radio podcasts as well. I listen to everything on the Oscast network too. And Thank I listen you. to <laughs> press box app every week. Very nice. I, my go to uh, one called case file. It's a crime one. Uh-huh. Um, hosted by the bloke with the most monotone voice you ever hear in your life. That's uh, quite fascinating. And, yeah, same as you. I listen to – every now and then I'll have a notification pop up for some Triple M footy best ofs. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. over summer there was the best of the quizzes and all that sort of stuff. So I just listen to those a fair bit. Yeah, right. Yep. And everything on the Oscars Network. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I listen to everything on the Oscars Network. <laughs> uh, by choice. But, yeah, by choice. Yeah. Uh, but also when I'm not doing that um, – I don't know. Like I've got a pretty broad range. It's like music. I've got a, as long as it's good quality content, I'll listen to yeah. it. Also, because I want to learn, yep. um, continually, yep. le- continually learning, whether that be from the content itself or the production and how they run their podcast. So um, I listen to a lot of podcasts on the NPR and Wondery networks. So Business Wars, I don't know if you've ever come across that. Uh, Business Wars is a great podcast where they um, can, they uh, tell the story of two businesses that have uh, warred. If that's the word, um, gone to war, war. war. yeah, war. yeah. <laughs> uh, hospital ward. I was going to say, um, uh, and I've been delivering to a lot of hospital wards at littleboxco.com.au. Um, so uh, the first one was um, Domino's and Pizza Hut. So it all starts back in like the the fifties and sixties when pizzas were crazy, and they go right up until today. Yeah. Uh, the one yeah. currently I'm, I'm listening to is SpaceX and Blue Origin. They're sort of um, war to get to uh, space, basically. Would, would there be an uh, episode where Hungry Jacks and McDonald's with the Big Jack? Yeah, or Burger King because it's yeah, an American King, uh, yeah. podcast. I, I dare say that'll be out at some point in the future. Yeah. It, it's they they have a massive team of researchers and writers and production people and stuff. So it's a, it's a really good podcast. Mm. Also, just um, I love hearing like 
going back to what you were saying, Jared, about what I did to your computer, is a um, podcast called Cyber from um, – uh, might be Vice, um, yeah. and, and they talk about cyber news and also talk about what's going on in the world from a cyber point of view. Um, yep. And then, oh, that's right, headlines uh, by Ozcast and the meditation world uh, on the Ozcast <laughs> yeah, network. No, um, I, I, I do believe that you is- listen to the post box. Yep. Um, I've listened to five minutes of it just before we went on it um, uh, that one time last year, um, and also the, the I think they where, respect that though. Yeah, I think they understand that. Um, yeah, I don't really care um, <laughs> about sports stuff. No, uh, yeah, like, no, we've, like, no, we've noticed we've in the noticed generic before. sort of overall world of sport. Yeah, cool, whatever. But when it comes down to sort of uh, talking about stats and what I feel about a uh, certain rule change and stuff like that, I yeah, I'm, I'm not listening to something that's no, going to make I me money that. rather yep. than um, lose me money. So <laughs> there's some great questions. Um, this is from at Josh Miller, which is at Mill Train. How many side hustles does Andy have? I reckon he's asked something similar to this before. Yeah, is this like um, you're going to get the answers over time if you keep asking me and then put it together as he's a montage He's asked the exact same question leave? before, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he has. No, don't, don't answer that. Mate, Josh, if you're going to ask a question, can you please make sure you haven't asked it before? Far out. <laughs> um, okay, so the next question as we scroll down is from Cam Hawkins at Hawko88, favourite coffee spot in Adelaide? Ooh. Um... When it comes to here in town, just behind Ozcast is a sneaky little one that started up called um, Something Friend. Right. Um, give me a second. <laughs> yeah, good. Um, good. Should've, I should have given you preparation. To yeah. <laughs> Bang Bang Cafe. Okay. Not bad. Um, in Semaphore, Mr. Pilgrim, my ultimate favourite in the city, Penny University. There's the two. Um, there used to be this secret cafe that Andy and I went to somewhere in town near Gawler Place, which we used to say to our boss, do you want to go for a secret coffee? And any excuse that he had to get out of the office is like, yep, for sure. So he used to go there for about an hour each day and just sit down there. That was pretty good. Yeah. And any Hello Sani that has Andy in it? Hello Sani, very good. Yep. They've got three locations now. Peary Street, Gawler Place and on Weymouth Street That's from fun. Skip Strudwick. Um, TV binge recommendations right now. Ooh. Well, I yeah, Homeland season eight's just gone on to Netflix. That's a good oh, one. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Look forward to that. Homeland's great. Yep. Um, I haven't really been binging on much lately. Hey, it's been working. When I get home, I work. So, um, okay. it's been a great Q and A so far. Yeah. Well, cool. that chess one. I watched that chess one on Netflix. The something Gambit or something. Okay, so you don't know the name of anything. I'm really bad at lyrics so and cafe. remembering <laughs> shit. I watched that. Uh, there was one on. There's one on Netflix where they do an investigation into a girl missing at the Cecil Hotel in LA. Okay. Um, oh yeah. 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 Don't bother. Really? Okay, we won't watch that one. Shit. Um, I have been watching uh, WandaVision on Disney Plus, which is amazing. If you like the Marvel movies, I reckon it's the most creative TV show that has ever been on television. It's incredible. It is called WandaVision. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, okay, so a couple more um, from at Jamie Manson 101. Tried any good drinks lately? Had a Fanta the other day. Oh, nice. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Um, good. I had a vitamin C <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> yeah. which was pretty good. I had good. a tall breck red wine, which is beautiful up in the Barossa Valley. Very nice. Um, I feel like you're. Okay, I so. feel like you're the one that's going to try something new out of all three of us. Well, you know what? Um, okay. I did get a couple of bottles of wine through the uh, the Maker and the Drinker podcast on the Oscars yep. Network, and um, yeah, any, anything from um, First Drop Wines is sensational. Like we haven't Agreed. had a bad one yet. You know, yep, no, not, I, know. Well, no, I don't mean bad. Like it's off when you open it up. You know, when you like, <laughs> yeah. you have a wine. You're like, oh, that's not really for me. A- anything Correct. that we drank, whether it be a Shiraz or like anything lighter than that, has been yep. sensational. Mm. Like, that's what I find. And it's, I, I said to to John Retzis from First Drop the other day, it's it's difficult for me to drink other wine because yeah. of how good First Drop is. The Torbreck that I had um, the other day is that's the closest that I've been to to have something. On par with first drop, it's yeah, absolutely beautiful. Two more questions. But this so, is the one from Shubaka Sha- SA. Shout out to Jamie. Will we hear Jared Tomich. Walsh on the radio again now that he's had some time away to reflect? Has he been approached from any other station? Now you've uh, made a bit of a deal out of this one. You've posted it all over yeah. your social media and you've built up the answer. So I'm very looking forward to it. 
Well, the, the reason that I've put this on social media, I wanted to do a little bit of a test because I think there are certain types of people who are going to be listening to what's going on here. And I think this happens a lot. Now, I'll, I'll be I'll be completely honest because I am on this podcast. Um, there, there's certain types of people who will be listening for this answer. There'll be ones who are genuinely interested and be really keen to hear what's going on. The, the genuine caring type. There will be ones, uh, people that will be listening to go, I just want to find out what's going on because I like gossip so I can just start gossiping because the media is just full of that. There'll be other people that will be going, um, uh, I don't like Jared. I'm going to listen just to see what he's doing. Hopefully he's not doing anything because he could be taking an opportunity away from me. There's so many different types of people that would be yeah, listening. That's, that's um, me and Andy. The answer to the question, say again. I said that's me and Andy. <laughs> Oh, 100%. But that's not just the media industry. That's just people in general. People like to know what's going on so they can talk about it. Yeah. Um, they like to message you and uh, come out of the blue. Oh, mate, you've you got another radio gig. And I would write back, hey, mate, haven't heard from you in six months. What's going on? Everything okay? But there, because there's there's news. Um, so um, the answer to the question from Stubacker is, um, yeah, potentially, you, you might hear me on the radio again. There is a fair chance of that happening. Um have I been approached from other stations? I have, I've had conversations with other radio stations apart from Nova Entertainment, definitely. Um, it is all dependent on whether the fit is right for the station and myself. Our values need to align of where we are at. The leaving, leaving Nova has, and 5AA gave me a really good opportunity to reflect on what's important to me and the journey and the direction that I want to head and if that aligns with the the journey and the direction the station wants to head, then fantastic. I I love radio, and I think that I've got a lot to offer in certain elements of it still. Um, so conversations are happening, and uh, when they are final, if and when, I will tell you on Best Team Men podcast. Does that yeah, answer boy. it enough? Yes. Okay. Awesome. The next question. Parma or Parmi? That's it's a stupid question because everyone says Parmi, right? And I that, mean, and, I, I and that's in stupid, from at it. Melbourne. <laughs> 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 yeah, Maddie, look. take us through your top five schnitties in South Australia, and then we'll go into the Back to the Future quiz to finish off this round of best team men. Righto. So sitting, coming in at number five, yep. champion takeaway, Christie's Beach. Okay, really good for you know takeaway shop quality Parmi. And, and yeah, so uh, is it, how does it come? Is it in it comes one of those in a styrofoam? Foil? Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, it's foil. Um, no, nah, it's not uh, foil. No, nah, actually, it might be a car- one of the cardboard ones because okay. yeah, I think the people are trying to be a bit more environmentally friendly and stay away from styrofoam. Yeah, so it comes in there. So for, for a takeaway shop, it's actually you know pretty good quality. The Lonsdale Hotel, the Lonnie. Oh, yeah, Lonnie. The Lonnie. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So you can go. Hey, down, you can go, let's you, go to Launceston. Yeah. So you can go down there and get a get a schnitty and that's, and that's try, where the try not get stabbed. Um, that's where the uh, <laughs> those two boys that make movies and that chamois guy drove that car full That's of water right. through the drive through. Yeah, yeah. Uh, racker, 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 yeah, racker, 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 racker boys. Yeah, racker, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy yeah. fellas. Uh, another takeaway yeah. shop coming in at number three. Grace Court. Oh, Gracie. Yep, Gracie Court. Where's so, that? Um, what did she catch? A palmy. <laughs> um, so no, they're 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 a great little takeaway shop just in at uh, Morfa Vale yeah. near my house. Yeah. Uh, coming in at number two, the Cooper's Ale House, the one in the city. Yeah, uh, their six hundred gram setup is phenomenal. That'll be massive. Great. Yeah, it's huge. Do they? Um, massive, yeah. uh, how do you say this in non-sexual terms? Bat it out. Uh, yes, <laughs> like um, they must do. Give it a good hammer, smashing. Yeah, yeah. So you know how they flatten it out? Yeah, they belt it. Yeah, <laughs> give it a good belt. <laughs> and, uh, and what's the palmy like? Yeah, yeah good one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and number one, uh, the Seaford Hotel, one kilo. One kilo. One kilo. Now I've, I've had a few one kilos in my time. Um, the palmies and um, is it one? Piece of meat, it is. or is it many? <laughs> no, it's one. Okay, one. Yeah. So one. I went there with a mate of mine, and we ordered one each. And the guy was like, "Oh, great timing! There's only two left." So we went, "Oh, this is you know, it's fate. It's meant to be." Yeah. yeah. So we went there, and we ordered, and we thought, "Yeah, this is awesome. We've came at the best time." And anyway, he comes out about five minutes later, and he says, "Look, guys, I'm really sorry, but at the same time, you guys ordered someone from the bistro, which is in another part of the the pub, ordered yeah. one as well. So we've only got one." <sighs> So he said, what we'll do is we'll give you one of the one kilos and then we'll give you three normal schnitzels on a plate. Oh, so three Jesus. normal ones in one kilo. Yeah, three. Far out. Yeah. So it was... Uh, How'd you go? I had the one kilo one and I smashed it. Yeah. So... 
Um, we will put that up on our social media. I think that's very important. Maddie, the only issue I have is four out of the five are from uh, suburbs which are south of the city. You need to yeah, come over the other three, side three of, of the city three to experience, of the five, right? Three of the five. Oh, well, sorry, mate. That's well, right. just come to the sorry, no, you're side right, four of town of and experience it. But it's a good start. So maybe we can say Maddie's southern suburbs top five. Yeah. Maddie, Southern Suburbs, top five. <laughs> I've schnitzels. Parmesan. Right, let's play Back to the Future, Andy. This is your redemption round here. Back to the Future quiz. We like to do a little bit of nostalgia. Oh, it's just beautiful, this music. Ah, duck. Greatest movie of all time. <laughs> We're going to 2020. Great. Okay, guys, you know what the deal is. Your name is your buzzer. Test your buzzers, please. Andrew. Matthew. <laughs> Good luck. Here we go. Question one, keeping in mind that Matt Burgess got nine, nine out of ten last round. Question one, name a famous soft drink starting with the word doctor. Matt. Matt, Matt what's yes. the best? <laughs> Dr. Pepper. <laughs> correct. Dr. Pepper is correct. I just knew you were going to answer that, so that's why I said your name. Wait, oh, throw him in. Just to reflect on, on years gone past, Question two, name one of the Brady Bunch. Matt, do you? Matt, Far out, man. Marsha. Do you drop some, like, brain drugs before we get in here? Because <laughs> you're just right on the ball. No. Finish no. this title, Home Alone 2. Matthew, lost in New York. Oh, he's good. He's good. Oh, I was going to say, three. Andrew, not as good as the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Question four. Name a Sydney Swans player with the first name Jared. Matthew. Andrew, damn it, you're in front. <laughs> God damn it. I mean, I'm at a Catholic school. I mean, golly, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got Matt. Crouch, Moore, um, McVeigh. Yeah. Got, okay, well done, Matty. So you have three points, yeah. I guess. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Question five. Name a track on Super Mario Kart. Oh. The album, or <laughs> I, was, I was like, I don't know the soundtrack. What are you yeah, talking yeah, yeah, about? <laughs> Name a track on Super. Uh, no, um, uh, Andrew, Mushroom no. Heaven. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> sorry, no, that was just oh, that's the name of your experience. that's the name of your biography, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mushroom <laughs> Heaven. Oh. Uh, okay, so I would have accepted like Rainbow Road. There's Cooper Trooper Beach, and oh, I think oh, yeah. Beach. I was going to say Kokomo Beach, but yeah. I think that was the Beach Boys. Yeah. Okay, Matt's on yes. four. Question six: Name a band member from Five. Oh, fuck's sake. Uh, five. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Andrew, <laughs> Andy, Matt, Matt, Matt is incorrect. <laughs> no, no. Um, there was like Sean, oh, uh, oh, oh Richie, Sean, Sean, Abs, <laughs> Scott, Jay. I think it's Jay. Oh, yeah, Scott. Anyway, um, Manny's leading four 0 at the moment. Uh, question seven: Name a former Adelaide Breakfast Radio show. Matthew. Andrew, for oh, fuck you, fuck you, fucking fuck, <laughs> Matt, Paul, Amanda, and James. Yeah, great. Yeah, Five. Yeah, cool. Question eight. Name a Marvel character. Matt. Man, oh, fuck's sake. Oh. <laughs> Thor. <laughs> Matt's got six. Andy, just say your name straight Man, away, I, bro. I, yeah, I just, <laughs> for some reason, I think about it before I say it, yeah. and then all of a sudden, Matty's in there first. That's the key, man. Just the yeah. key. Question nine. Name an Eminem song. Andrew. Hey. Um, yes. Lose yourself. <laughs> yes. Oh, there you go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And Which is what so I'm doing right six, now. Six one. Six one. This one is worth seven points. <laughs> <laughs> Spell the word Tamagotchi. Andrew. <laughs> yeah, I said that. I was like, Andrew. fuck, I don't know how to spell it. T A M A G O T C H I. And he's won it. Oh, yeah. this is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yes. Yeah. Nice. That's I am the winner. Ah, oh, bullshit. <laughs> Oh, boys, oh. that was great. Good round. Please share this podcast. We have more news coming up next round. Enjoy Perth. <laughs> I've got to study for my next quiz. <laughs> I'm going to just roll up. This I guess. Been great. <laughs> he's just Stephen Thanks Braver. Thanks Podcast Network. Thanks to Con. Thanks to uh, Stavros, the teeth cleaner. And, um, Cups, trophy, badges, man. Yeah, we do it better. Best team, man. Best team, man. BTC. BTS. 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 Yeah. Best team, man. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Okay. Oscar.
Hi, Jeremy Cordo in the Court of Public Opinion. I'm just on air here to let you know that we'll be live streaming the Court of Public Opinion every Friday between 9 o'clock and 12 on jeremycordo.com. Please join us. We'd love to have you.